The studios here are uh, an American treasure, really. They were built in 1905 by the Bancroft family and occupied in 1906 uh, by five of the Pyle students, uh, Wyeth, Arthurs, Dunn, Peck, and Ashley. And they were built because uh, there was no place for many of the young students of Howard Pyle uh, who had already become professional, uh, no place for them to paint. But um, uh, my grandfather went to the Bancroft family and asked if uh, he would consider building some studios for these young artists. And lo and behold, he said, yes, I'll do it. It's $10,000, I'll build them. I'm gonna charge you $17 a month rent. This is a business proposition. And they're still here. And that's the amazing thing. And they're the scene of some extraordinary illustrating by those five artists and then subsequently over the many years, other artists who rented the studios. But uh, my grandfather painted here for 60 years. He never left. Oh, he went in the summers to paint up in Bushkill. But uh, he maintained a residency uh, here in, until the late 60s. Grandfather left the house and headed over to the studio, uh, only about eight blocks away. But it was, uh, you know, his uh, place of work. And it is remarkable what he um, what he achieved here, what he was able to produce out of this one building here uh, while he was handling all the responsibilities uh, of an American illustrator. I mean, it was obviously a living, but it also was the way he lived, you know. Uh, there was a paycheck uh, at the end of the week, at least they hoped there would be, and that was nothing about my grandfather. He had a, a remarkable career. His career spanned that whole sort of golden age of American illustration. but. Uh, that wasn't the reason he painted. He painted to bring these images alive, to, uh, to be inspired, and to, f and to carry forth what Pyle had so uh, demonstratively instilled in him uh, as an artist who uh, could be a great illustrator. Uh, what you see in the studio, of course, are many of the uh, ephemera and memorabilia and artifacts that they would use as what we would call props. But even then, uh, Mr. Pyle would insist that the props be properly placed in the paintings and be historically correct, or what he would say, uh, the fidelity of the uh, uh, props is very, very important. Because you know, the stories, it was storytelling, but it was bringing history alive to, uh, to the public at large. They, they sent me these stories about a man called Hopalong Cassidy. Did you ever hear of him? Well, do you know why they called him Hopalong? You don't? Oh, because he had a short leg. And he hopped along. You notice the holes in the window in the bottom of the picture in the glass? They're bullet holes. Well, I always thought it would shatter the glass. That's the way I, I, I indicated it was charcoal, and someone came in the studio and said, that isn't the way glass acts if you shoot a bullet at it. So that isn't true. He says, go ahead and get a rifle, put a rifle bullet and shoot it at the window and see what happens. So he did. And that's what a bullet does, cuts clean. Strange thing, that that's the way it, was, that's the way it works and that's the way it was painted. A story that uh, my grandfather told me, which I think is, is truly extraordinary, is when he and Mr. Arthur's uh, Stanley went over to uh, Mr. Pyle's studio, knocked on the knocker, and went in uh, the afternoon, and there was uh, the Battle of Bunker Hill partially painted on the easel. And after a short visit, um, they uh, went home. Next morning, back again to Mr. Pyle's studio, knocked on the knocker, and, and as my grandfather would say, the big man let us in the studio. But we noticed that the Battle of Bunker Hill wasn't as complete as it had been the day before. And he said, boys, you remember that picture you saw on the easel, the Battle of Bunker Hill? He says, I took it down the cellar, and I took a knife, and I cut it up, and I, I put it in the heater. We, he had a coal heater. So he said, and then the Battle of Bunker Hill went up in smoke. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> now he said, I'll start another one. So naturally, we asked him, uh, why? Well, he says, I didn't smell the smoke. So, so it couldn't have been real.
I'm telling you this just to show you how close an artist can get to the picture or to the thing that he's doing. Boys, he said, I had the smell of smoke and of battle in the studio today. And I, he says, I actually, I actually smell smoke. Now, there wasn't any story quality in that. There wasn't any trying to, to foolish, you know. He meant it. You could see it. And that'll tell you how much emotion Mr. Plow put into his work. You gotta smell the smoke.